What's up guys, War here. I'm gonna be showing you my end game Bloodlands Necromancer build for Overpower in season two. This build is absolutely fun. It's so, so good. It slaps everything, especially single target bosses, which is something that we lacked in our Blood Surge build, our Blood Surge variant. So today I'm gonna to go over everything that you guys are gonna need for the build. Skills, Paragon, uh, Vampire Powers, all of it. Let's get right into it. So guys, I'm going to be honest with you, if you guys have seen my Blood Surge video, go check that out. But the Blood Lance build is essentially the same exact build, and we are going to change just a few things. So I'm going to go over everything, but just know that it is just barely different with just a few powers and a couple skill changes from the Blood Surge build. So that way, when you are building up towards one or the other, you can just quickly change seamlessly between the two. So guys, again, we are going straight Bloodlance. We're going to start off with Hemorrhage again into Acolyte's Hemorrhage for the attack speed while we're healthy. Huge for creating uh, Blood Orbs, which is even more important in this build because we are going to be able to automatically consume them instead of having to walk over them, which is an issue that we face in Blood Surge. So Acolyte, Acolyte's Hemorrhage is very, very important here. We don't care about the Fortify. We want to attack as fast as possible to create those Blood Surges, or excuse me, Blood Orbs, okay? It's just a quick one. It has a 20% chance, but with how fast we attack, we can generate a lot. One point in Unliving Energy for more Essence, but to get to Imperfectly Balanced, so it costs more, but we deal more damage. Blood Lance is only going to cost 12 for us. We could actually get this a little bit less. I've been testing with putting max points into this for just even more damage. You could take points out just to reduce the, the cost or the lucky hit chance or whatever you want, but the damage is just here. We just need this. We're going to go into Super uh, Natural Blood Lance. Once we use Blood Lance six times, we auto overpower and create a Blood Orb, which is going to get automatically consumed. Then we're going to come down to our Corpse and Max skills. Again, we're doing Blood Mist into Ghastly to create a corpse. And it's our only form of Unstoppable besides our Evade. Then we're going to come down to Curses. Again, we're doing Death's Embrace for close damage, um, as well as uh, damage from... We take less damage from enemies dealing damage to us. However, you could swap this out for Death's Reach if you really wanted to. Totally depends on you, but you're going to have to be pretty far for that. I still tend to be pretty close when I'm fighting, so this just works for me better. Then we're doing Decrepify again with uh, Aberrant. Decrepify for the chance to reduce our cooldowns as well as do all of our CC. So this is going to allow us to slow and possibly stun enemies on a lucky hit. Then we're doing Amplified Damage. We deal 20% multiplicative more damage to every enemy that is cursed. This is huge. Then, of course, down to our bread and butter, our Corpse and Max skills again. We're taking Corpse Tendrils into Blighted, so that way we have a chance to make as many Blood Orbs as possible. And then we're taking every Blood skill that we have in the game here. Gruesome Mending for more healing. Transfusion for more uh, chances on the lucky hit to create a Blood Orb. <clears throat> Coalescent Blood to deal more damage when we're healthy, which should always be happening. We are having almost 100% uptime on Fortify. Then we got Drain Vitality. On a lucky hit, we have a chance to fortify 8% uh, of our max life, which is a lot. And then Tides of Blood. We deal even more overpower damage, and it's doubled if we're healthy. So it's 50% increased overpower damage. Absolutely insane. Then we're going to come down. We're taking three points in Inspiring Leader. While we're healthy, we get more attack speed. Huge. And then stand alone for damage reduction while we have no minions. This is a no minion build. And Momentum Mori for increased sack bonuses on warriors and mages. Now, I have been toying around here. As you guys know, in our past build for Blood on, uh, Surge or Nova, we take Blood, or excuse me, Bone Storm. The reason we take Bone Storm is the increased damage reduction and increased crit chance while it's active. However,. This build is an exceptionally good with Blood Wave. The main reason is because we create three Blood Orbs, which allows us not only to consume the Blood Orbs automatically, which will automatically refill our essence, but if we apply the power that allows us to throw three of them, we create nine and it makes it really, really insane. So I've tested with both. I feel like I still enjoy Bone Storm. However, Blood Wave is a massive, massive damage multiplier in this build because we just get to fire more Bone Spear, or excuse me, Bone Spears, uh, Blood Lances more often and keep our essence full. Okay, now let's get over to uh, our gear. 
Our key passive, of course, guys, is going to be uh, Rathman's Vigor. So while we're healthy, we deal, uh, we get our next blood skill to be overpowered. And then the timer is reduced each time we consume blood orbs, which this triggers a lot faster because we're auto consuming blood orbs as opposed to uh, manually picking them up with blood surge. Uh, we'll get into that in the gear in just a sec. So I just want to throw that out there. So into the gear, guys, we will be doing bone weave shielding helm so that way when bone storm is active we gain a barrier this just helps us stay even more tanky and to solidify our overpower damage then we got the breastplate of might which is going to give us damage reduction with might you can also do disobedience here both are fine i just opted for might because i had a better role then we got it grasping veins of course when we do do our corpse tendrils which is not only going to give us blood orbs but we get slow and stun from this which is going to give us a huge advantage in our crowd control for more damage we almost got this a max so make sure you have that in our pants blood mood breaches again when we deal damage with a or when we curse enemies enemies that are affected by one curse they take 70 percent multiplicative overpower damage from us which is just nuts then we got ghost walkers in our boots guys while unstoppable we get increased move speed we are going to be unstoppable from our evade which is going to be our new vampiric power which we'll get into shortly then on our weapon this is the only gore quills that i have found it's a pretty darn good roll but gore quills is necessary for this build it says when casting blood ant blood lance you will consume a blood orb to also conjure lances from them each additional lance deals 94% of normal damage and prioritizes targeting unlanced enemies. So this is the key power that you need for the build. So when blood orbs and we're making them, we're gonna auto consume them with this, which is gonna refill our essence and do even more damage. So anything that we have that benefits us from consuming blood orbs like healing, damage, essence regeneration, etc., all benefit from using this, it just stacks freely. In our amulet, we have Rathmus Chosen. This is also necessary for the build. When your blood skills overpower, we gain attack speed for four seconds. This is huge. We want as much attack speed as possible. Then we have Hungry Blood. This is also something that I tested that I really like. Each cast of Blood Lance will launch an ditch additional Blood Lance at a nearby enemy. When it first hits that enemy that is already Lance, you deal 48% of normal damage. Pretty cool here. We just fire even more Lances. Then of course we have Potent Blood. Uh, while healthy, blood orbs grant us 18 essence. So every blood orb we get is going to give us a full essence back. We only cost 12 for blood lance. So this is one and a quarter of our blood lance. We're actually one and a half because it's 18. Yeah, it's one and a half. So each blood orb that we, we get, we effectively get to have three blood lances casted for free. So it's really, really strong. You need to have this. Now, a lot of people ask me about blood lance, why we use a two handed as opposed to a main hand and an offhand you can opt for that but we want to deal as much damage as possible okay but you can opt for that you would just put the gore quills in here and then in your offhand you could do something like increase damage while you have a barrier or sacrificial where you're sac you're you know, sacrificing your um your minions here will have a 20 percent increase there's a lot of options here or you could just do the one that i really like here each percent that we heal we deal even more overpower damage so you have a lot of options here. I'm opting for the two-handed just to deal as much damage as possible. Um, however, also doing this, you will get more attack speed if you do the one hand. So that's the gear, guys. Let's go into our sacks for our minions here. We're sacrificing skirmishers for increased crit chance. Then we are gonna be sacrificing our bone mages for increased overpower damage. And then in our golems, we're sacrificing blood for the 10% increased max life, huge those are those let's go over to the vampiric power guys these are going to stay the same as they were in blood surge because these are the best ones we got blood boil when our core skills overpower we spawn three blood drops which is cool but more importantly every 20 seconds our next skill is guaranteed to overpower then we have metamorphose this is where we can evade and become unstoppable so we have four evade charges this is oh you won't get to see it i'll show you here in a second but this is not only how we become unstoppable but this is how you see us jumping around here. This is how we can make enemies vulnerable because Metamorphose damages all enemies in the path. We inflict them with a curse and we're pairing that with Prey on the Weak. So when enemies are afflicted by a Vampiric Curse, which is Metamorphose, we get to make them vulnerable and then we deal 16% increased multiplicative damage to vulnerable enemies, which is very, very strong. 
Next we have Hemomancy. This is by far one of the best vampiric powers in the game. Our attacks deal 80% of our max life every four seconds, and then we heal 1% of the max life every four seconds. So we are going to be doing 80% of our normal damage, and then we're healing 80 or 1% of 21,000 life, 22,000 life. And for each enemy that we hit, which heals us, insane, we should never die. And then our last one is Ravenous. On the lucky hit, we get uh, attack speed increased by 40% of our total move speed for six seconds. Our current move speed, I think, is 140% move speed, which is actually pretty fast for a Necromancer. So we get 40% 40, 40 of this attack speed or uh, of our movement speed as attack speed uh, uh, stacked on. So into the Paragon board real quick, guys, just to go over this. I'm not going to go into much detail. Check out the Mobilytics link down below that is going to detail all of this even further and highlight a lot of the things that you need to know big shout out to mobilytics for being sponsored with us on the channel for all your one-stop shop for all the build guys that you need for diablo 4 so i'm just going to hit you with the highlights here guys we're doing blood drinker for more damage and dexterity and fortify we're doing um territorial for more close-up damage we're doing bloodbath for even more overpower damage we are doing blood begets blood for blood orbs doing increased damage when we pick them up. This will always be active at a max 15%. Then we have corporal for even more overpower blood healing and will and dex. Then we have a uh, sense of death. We're going to do this mainly for the damage reduction. Um, and then we're doing dominate, which is our huge overpower node. This is going to give us increased overpower damage. And then our last one up here is going to be uh, control with the bone graft uh board here we're going to be taking control from even, even more crowd control enemies because between our corpse tendrils and our curses they should always be crowd controlled slowed or stunned so guys that is the paragon board so a few things because i want to shock talk to you about this build and just kind of showcase it just slightly more and showcase the boss so two of the big reasons why blood lance i think is better than blood surge is because we not only don't have to manually pick up blood orbs, but we're much stronger in single target damage, as you will see um, in this variant. So let's go. Again, you're just going to cast your curses. You can dodge through and make stuff vulnerable. Always curse if you can. And you just dominate everything. And once we get our attack speed, remember to use... Make sure you're using your hemorrhage because that's going to give us a lot of attack speed and a lot of blood orbs you cannot forget to do this i know it's great to, to just spam blood lance but you want to make sure that you are doing everything in your arsenal to just make as many blood orbs as possible because we have a very very strong lucky hit on here which is another problem that blood surge suffered because blood surge is only a 12 percent lucky hit whereas Blood Lance is a 33% lucky hit, which is insane. Let's not be stunned because crowd control from enemies has changed this season. Let's go ahead and kill him. We'll corpse syndrome everything in. And then everything just instantly dies. And I've already noticed that doing Blood Lance over Surge, even though we sacrifice a slight amount of area damage, Okay, with as many lances that we're actually throwing, we're able to just nullify that as we continue to move and group them up with tendrils. It is just as good because Blood Lance actually pierces, which is huge for this build. Okay, we love to be able to pierce. Why isn't my tendrils going off? There we go. Jeez. And you can see once our attack speed goes up, it's, it's just nuts. So now let's go deposit our animus and I want to show you guys the boss fight here. Let's make sure we get our ultimate back. We start off attacking pretty slow, but as we continue to make um, corpses and blood orbs, we can really, really dominate this. So you guys can see like as we just keep going, single target damage, it's just so much faster than blood surge so much faster than blood surge it's so good let's get embroidered leveled up now one th last thing that i want to talk about this build guys is that 
Blood Lance is not necessarily a very good leveling build, but it is very good towards the end game once you start to get a couple powers because you want to be able to consume orbs. Once you can't do that, you just do Blood Surge instead. Now, this can do all end game content. You can kill Duriel, you can kill all the Ubers. I have not tested this on Lilith yet, but we are probably going to just to see. But you can absolutely slap everything in the game with this. So, guys, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about Blood Lance over Blood Surge, etc. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.